For the special occasion of one of my favorite bands of all time to bring out a new album, I've decided to review it. If not only for the controversy behind it, you know, some of you know what I'm talking about, but some might not, so I'll quickly clue you in. But without spoiling the fun, there's a lot about this record that I thoroughly enjoyed. There are also some giant flaws, and more on that later. This is the blocked content review of Blink-182's 8th studio album, California. So let's rewind a little bit. Former Blink-182 guitarist and vocalist Tom DeLonge decided to cancel about every opportunity the band had to record new material for the fans because of his busy schedule creating comic books, movies and music. While his other work is pretty creative and gaining a lot of attention, and the band Angels and Airways are such a joy to dream away to, this was a pretty nasty blow to the fans of his original band, Blink-182. So much so that he basically stalled the band's upcoming shows through an email sent out by his management. Ouch. Drummer Travis Barker and co-vocalist and bassist Mark Hoppus did not take lightly to this and sought legal separation for Tom from the band. Everything was posted online, laid bare for everyone to see, which made it even more sad. As a longtime fan of the band, it got pretty hard to get excited for a new record, or even a tour, if there was so much inner struggle in the group. Hoppus and Barker had Matt Skiba from Alkaline Trio fill in for Tom during a show. They enjoyed that experience so much that he went on tour and later became an official member of the band when they started recording new material for the fans. Now this is where it gets tricky, because supposedly they created this record for the fans, but without its leading man present on the album, how could it feel like home? Could the music still hit the right notes in both songwriting, humor and energy? Well, the answer is yeah, with a question mark hoppus at the end. I'll start off with the first track on the album, Cynical. Opens up with a silent bass guitar and vocal swell. The drums blast in with incredible speed, even resulting in a mistake from Travis Barker, then following up with the rest of the track. It's pretty short overall, not even hitting two minutes. This kind of sucks because the chorus is pretty powerful with a What's the point of saying sorry now? It kind of speaks to DeLong's quitting the band, only to apologize later. It immediately shows off Matt Skiba's raw vocal qualities, and it also gives a taste of the overall sound of the record. Clean-shaved pop-punk tracks that lean a little more to poppy mega productions due to heavy, heavy auto-tuning, and it introduces something I've come to love, even though I absolutely hate it, catchy chants. Overall, too short, but life is too short to live long anyway. The second song is the first single, Bored to Death, which also got an early 2000s-inspired music video. Starts off as sort of a nod to feeling this with the rising drums, and the vocal melodies in the chorus remind me of the verses in the band's previous record's Neighborhoods. It sounds eerily close to Tom DeLonge heavy Love is Dangerous. But this is a lot higher, and in live shows Mark Hoppus is barely able to squeeze out the notes. Matt fares a lot better, blasting out the extremely satisfying chorus melody with ease and bravado. The beats in this song are pretty laid back, but in a good way. The verses ramble on and the chorus has some interesting snare placements. The shortcomings of the song happen later on. The second verse is lyrically recycled from the first without it being anywhere needed for the story they're trying to tell. This gets to be a big, big problem for the record. Lyrics are a very big part of why I like Blink-182. Yes, sometimes cheesy, but a newer work, especially the self-titled album, very dark, truthful and beautiful. That spark is completely gone in the entire record, with only a few bridge words and some verses having actually interesting stories to tell. Nowhere poetic, always the first and easiest rhyme. This probably is the result from producer John Feltman, who is amazing at capturing a 2016 pop sound, which actually fits okay with Blink, but telling the band to sing the first thing that comes to mind and stick with it? That's something that cannot be fixed in post, and it continually forces these songs to not be taken seriously. Sad, because with actual content, the catchiness could easily be elevated tenfold. The song closes in on an ending, and we get forever repeating oh-ohs. Yeah, really didn't need that here. You'll get that feeling a lot on this album. Third song is called She's Out of Her Mind, and it's one of my favorites of the record. It's simple, just the right tempo, has an incredible bass guitar sound, and the catchiest chorus from the record in my opinion. Simple really works awesomely for this song. It reminds me of the rock show, especially in the first seconds of the chorus. And the second verse gives us some more Matt Skiba vocals, and you start to get a feel for his vocal bends and the steady notes. I'm warming up to that sound. The bridge has a problem of having terrible lyrics, but also a beat from Travis that feels a little too crazy for what's happening on bass and piano. But that halftime chorus at the end caught me off guard. Good stuff here, even adding a little lead guitar at the end. Cool. 
The fourth song, Los Angeles sounds like Fall Out Boy's Centuries. So that's pretty weird. Super obvious. I guess that's what happens if you write a whole record in a month's time. You kind of stop to think, you know, where did this idea come from? Not really. Other than that, I really like the ending of the bridge with a Matt Skiba only vocal. The ending chant is also quite interesting. The melody is weird, but it works. This song also has a great vocal performance from Mark Hoppus, and it's in a key I can imagine him actually pulling off live. The fifth song is sober, and it feels like an enema of the state-like song. It's always weird when a 40-year-old man makes you yeah, feel like the 90s, but in this case, it feels good. It was the right moment in the tracklist for something like this. Even the country vibe of the pre-chorus is very creative and a good choice. Skiba's lyrics in the first verse are a highlight just because they're finally something I can visualize, and it feels like something he actually went through. I hope the song title Sober talks a little bit about, you know, the lives of these guys now, as their parents and probably don't party quite as hard as they used to. They could have pulled that off easily, but now it feels expectedly bland. Travis Barker's intro and post-bridge drumbeat is a signature thing you'll beatbox for a while. Nice. At number 6, it's Built This Pool. It's short, and I don't get the lyrics, because I hope they're more clever than I think. Also, I guarantee you that the Is That Really It was forced and not a happy studio accident. That was a miss for me. The seventh song, No Future, is one of my faves from the record. However, it does have Travis Barker's worst written drum part from the entire record in the first verse. It's probably the toms in between and the off-tempo splash cymbal, but it just sounds too muddled. The chorus of this song is new for Blink, a very pattern-heavy, happy sound, but sad lyrics, you know, I dig it. I was along for the ride for both verses, and Mark and Matt's harmonies are spot on here. However, the forced na-na-na doesn't work here. The reason this trick worked so well in all the small things was because it was a yeah, new melody, not a recycled chorus. The bridge has some truly heartfelt delivery vocals from Skiba, and that's one of my top three moments from the record overall. Great voice, dude. The kick snare only chorus does the trick too, and it's new for Blink. This was a big hit for me. Number 8 is Home is Such a Lonely Place, and it continues the streak of positives. It's a great choice to have a ballad song in the record, and it comes at the right time. The finger picking guitar is welcome. I could do without the vague violins, but the melodies in the chorus from both Mark Hoppus and Matt Skiba are eerily beautiful. The reverse melodies work well too. Even the lyrics work in this song, it reminds me of kids leaving home to pursue their own stories in life, and that's exactly the kind of storytelling I want to hear more from, you know, from this modern Blink, because it's actually what's going on in their lives, and it feels real to the audience. The final chorus has one of the best Travis Barker beats from the record, just perfect. You will hum the chorus to this song quite a long time. At 9 it's Kings of the Weekend, which for the most part does exactly what it sets out to. It's a party song that makes you feel young and energetic, and it's also birthed some of the cringiest lyrics from the record. Here we go, cause we got no control, no control. I'm just not buying it. The heavy chord riff is welcome here though, we, we miss that. The second verse, as happens a lot in the album, is a Matt Skiba moment and it's, yeah, he's an awesome singer, such excellent delivery. The bridge is the repeated heavy riff, but with some melodic parts through it, and it really makes you miss the darker tones and melodies from Tom DeLonge. But moving on. We're at 10 and it's Teenage Satellites. The first verse opens immediately and it works really well. Good low vocals from Mark and a steady 16th beat from Travis. I love the chord progression in the chorus here and it feels like Matt Skiba is let a little more in the spotlight with his own chorus. The vocal melody in the second verse reminds me of older Blink songs in a good not copied way. And the production on Skiba's voice in the bridge is a good touch. As is the extra snare sound from Travis. The 11th song is Left Alone, and it weirdly opens like an Angels and Airwaves song. No doubt this was added so fans of Tom's more airy parts in newer Blink songs still carry through, but it feels again a little forced. The focal melody and trading vocals work very well in the verse. The oh 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 chan in the bridge feels so bland that you immediately think of three songs it's been used in. The bass riffs in this song are superb, but yeah, I'm still split on Left Alone. Rabbit Hole is song 12. It was previously released as a single too. It has a really fast pace and the chorus is powerful, but not too catchy. The lyric from Matt Skiba in verse 2, I'm a cardboard cutout, old and faded, is excellent. Travis's beat in the bridge is a trademark trick from the beast of a drummer, but it works here. Even the overused snare roll to the final chorus feels at its place. Too bad we end with just another sing-along chant at the end. 
We don't need them everywhere, dudes. San Diego is the 13th song, and I've come to love it. It feels dark, sad, and bitter. The chorus is very satisfying, and you feel like the lyrics are sung from the heart, even though they're quite easy. It feels like this song is about Tom, due to many references to stories we as fans have heard about the band growing up in San Diego. This song has, hands down, the best bridge of any song on this record and in Blink history. Blink is never too good with creative vocal bridges, but Matt knocks it out of the park both lyrically and with the sad melody. More of this, gentlemen. The post-bridge sing-along works here. The sing-along works. You heard it right. Song 14, The Only Thing That Matters. From the title alone, you'd think it'd be about continuing the legacy of Blink for the fans, but no. It's a generic love song, and even with the cheesy Angel From Heaven lyric, it's that bad. The chorus feels classic Mark. Okay, but never hitting a super catchy height. Again, Skiba has some personal words in this song, and they always work. I'm happy this song is quite short, not even hitting two minutes, because more chorus recycling would have made this a bad song. Now it's just an okay song. California, the 15th song, I view as the final song in the record. It has the feeling of melancholy, perfect vocal delivery by Hoppus on the verse, and telling about family and mistakes he made. Empty as a movie set is a strange lyric because those are usually pretty full but he probably feels empty means the same as fake. The tamarine hits in the verse are placed just right, so it makes you float along. There are a lot of synth laid around in this song, and it works because it doesn't happen too often in the record. They ruin a potential cute soft bridge again with na na na's, but in blast the big stadium rock chorus reprise, and that works, and it works very well. The joke ending song, number 16, titled Bohemian Rhapsody, I'm not gonna talk about. It was written and recorded in 9 minutes and it doesn't deserve my time. So all in all, I hope you don't mind me being overly musician specific on this review. I just analyze songs in the only way I know how and to reflect it to the things that I love to hear, not just in Blink but in general, and what fans should expect from the record. You know, looking back on the songs, I enjoyed more of it than I didn't. Matt Skiba was a tight choice for a new singer, even if I had my doubts at first. His experience and years probably have loads of interesting stories to tell, and I'd love to hear them in Blink. Lyrically, the record is really terrible, but it makes up for this with very good vocal melodies, a poppy airtight production from Feldman, though I do miss the raw self-titled sound, but that was lightning at a bottle at this point. And I also feel Mark finally has his record to shine. I like Tom more than I do Mark. A lot more, and it has to do with more than just song appeal, but also a bit of attitude, emotion, and true artistic focus. I miss that in Mark's writing sometimes, but Mark has grown as a songwriter in general, and with this record, he should be proud. Travis is expectedly good, but sometimes he needs to learn to mix up the formula, especially with his go-to drum moments, things like ending bridges with snare rolls and doing intricate beats at bridges. Thinking outside the box sometimes means not taking the most complicated road. John Feldman produced a big record, and I think people are gonna love it. There's so much to sing along to, even if you don't really know what message you're singing along to. I give Blink-182's California a 7.9 out of 10. I hope you guys enjoyed this in-depth track-by-track review, and please subscribe to Blocked Content for more awesome stuff. Leave a comment, bros. Bye.